Hi there. Today we're going to test out the um, turbine and the generator by hand. I've got it connected to the uh, bridge rectifier I found in my junk pile. It's pretty heavy duty. It's converting it to DC here. We're on the 20 volt range now. And just for a hand spin. We're delivering nearly 8 volts at that speed, not very fast, and for a short circuit, oh, on. milliamps, put on the 20, I'm going to test it with the water blaster actually. Uh, so I'll um, fire that up and see what I can get. It's going to be hard to hold. I'll set up a little stand for the camera I think. I'll be back. Amperage had to go to the 10 amp range for a hand spin. Yeah, one amp at that speed. 500, 400, 300 milliamps. That's a short circuit there. It's one amp by hand. Alright, I'll connect the um, water blaster. Okay, I've got a clamp on the hose in the bucket now. So... I'm gonna check it out. Alright, so keep an eye on the voltage. Going through a bucket of water already. We got 70 volts. It's not balanced or anything yet. It's bouncing around a bit. And it got a bit wetter than I wanted it to. So we're still pulling out 44 volts. DC rectified, and if I'm game enough, we'll short circuit it. Four amps, that slows it down quite well. Well, there you go. I think it's a two man job really for this to film this and to use the water blaster. Right, I'll let it dry and then I'll strip it apart and tell you about it. Okay, I'm going to do another test. This time I've got the hose connected to the water bar blaster instead of that bucket. And I've got the cowling on so the water should not go over here. Alright, 
So we're on the 200 volt range. Keep an eye on that. I think we got to about 90 volts. Pretty hard smoking the water blaster in that time. We kept the water down. A little bit of water, probably a bucket for us. And a short circuit doing it at this. Amps max. That's not too bad. It's coming to a crawl now. Still 800 milliamps. Okay, hopefully the camera is in its right orientation. Flipped over on the last test. Alright, I'll let that dry and I'll um, tell you about it. So the test with the water blaster wasn't too bad. I was quite surprised it um, performed quite well, even though it's not balanced. Um, everything was cut by hand mainly. I um, made this aluminium billet and got the local machinist guy to um, machine it up for me. That was made out of scrap aluminium. And um, everything's pretty much scrap material. The copper wire for the coil was scrap, the plates. I, um, the shaft is a um, 
threaded bar, which is not too straight. I need to get one of them machined up and it will probably be balanced a bit better or considerably much better. So I'll just take the first magnet plate off. magnets on the out that disc there's another disc tucked in there with the same setup oops the magnets are quite strong so you keep attaching to everything uh, the coil it's nine coils it's a three phase uh, they're color coded if I put this here See the top ones. Alright, bear with me. I'm on the ground and my hand's wobbly. Alright, we have the black one. One, two, and three make one phase. The next one is the green one. We have three more of those coils. Second phase, and the blue is the third phase. These are all the tail ends of each of the phase coils. And these are the terminal ends. It's uh, currently configured <coughs> in star pattern, which is bridging all of them. And you can take a neutral off if you want to run AC. Off of there, and then each phase from that to your uh, neutral will give a certain AC voltage at whatever frequency you're running the generator at. <clears throat> um, I sort of cut some corners to, uh, for cost reasons because it was a prototype and I didn't know about the windings and that was only scrap wire. It's quite large in size. I forgot what it was. It's probably nearly 3 mil, 2.5 at least. I'll measure it. <laughs> yeah. It's two mil. That's not gonna focus. Yeah, so. yeah. Two millimeter copper wire. <clears throat> what else? Ah, oh, yeah, with the um fiberglassing, um, it was gonna cost. Well, something like $200 for four litres of um, the resin for moulds or $80 for the just um, laminated fiberglass. Um, as you can tell, it doesn't like being really thick. And it also reacted with the um, uh, wax I used on the mould. So that was another error. But overall, yeah, it came out nice, not too bad. It's probably within two millimeters. That coil sit really well to that plate and then that touch. And to um, hold this plate center, I used um, four threaded bars, drilled into this main chassis, which was leveled up, but using four locators with washers to adjust you can get the angles if you're out in alignment which the center shaft because it was all handcrafted with the bearings down in there uh, it was like about two mil off center from the frame or thereabouts not too bad doesn't matter because everything sort of aligned itself from the shaft 
So everything comes off of there, and that's what was the um, purpose of the four shredded bars to hold that. And I haven't tested it with just one magnet ring yet to see if the voltage is different. And I think the magnets is a north and a north. They face each other so the flux can go through it. Yeah, so things taken about oh, three years or so to collect the parts and whatnot. Magnets are quite dear. Seven bucks a piece. They're only N32s, they're 25 by 50 by 10. And the plate thickness needed for the magnet is, has to be, um, bare minimum is half of the magnet thickness to transfer the flux, they say. Yeah, so I guess um, overall performance ain't too bad. This was an old welding frame thing, which was a welder, which I stripped down, which this copper came out of. Uh, and the scrap man only wanted like two dollars a kilo for the wire and it was perfectly good like I unwound it and wound these coils they're 90 turns each um, and the enamel was perfect in perfect condition when I was pulling it apart I was like oh that's too good to get rid of and I had six holes for the bolt locations because it was a home casted so it's a bit brutal, but not too bad. The machine has said it machined up really well and it's uh, casted pretty solid. So that was one of my first castings. It was just um, clay sand and clay mix. And the clay mix was clumping kitty litter. Crushed up, of course, and then mixed. And this is, uh, you've seen this before in the steam generator or the steam boiler run, which will power it. Um, I don't think I had the uh, water blaster sitting correctly on the fans to power it properly. It's like, you'd have to get a to tangent to it or something to get optimum power. Uh, that's 1400 watts, that thing. So, <laughs> and this thing's probably only pulling out, yeah, 750 maybe. It could go more if you like 12 amps and uh, 80 volts. But then, yeah, once you keep your load on, you're going to have more force to drive. Yeah, so there you go. Hopefully I can get the boiler pipes ready, ready for the steam and give it a good try, a proper try and see what we get. By hand it was um, 8 volts, 1 amp, not too bad. Wasn't hard to turn that, just need a handle. Um, they're normally used for wind turbines, so you could sit a, I could turn it upside down and put a vertical wind thing on it if I wanted to. I'll have to chop these off, but I was thinking about having dual rotors on here. There's room for one more, but that would require a longer shaft and stuff. So there you have it, <clears throat> not bad, it's got a little machine for totally homemade except for a few parts machined up. Alright, thanks for watching.